Chapter 2, Learning Objective 1. Describe asset, liability, and equity accounts, and identifying the effect of debits and credits on each. In accounting, accounts accumulate detailed information regarding the increases and decreases in specific asset, liability, and equity items. Accounts are maintained in a ledger, also referred to as books. And even though virtually all accounting systems are computerized today, the term books carries over from the days of manual recording of transactions and entries. The first type of account is called an asset account. Assets are resources that have future economic benefits for the business. The reason why a company builds a factory, for example, is to be able to manufacture its product for years to come. Assets are used in day-to-day -day operating activities in order to generate revenue either directly or indirectly. For example, a factory contributes directly to revenue generation by producing, say, widgets that are to be sold for profit. An example of an asset that would indirectly generate revenue would be the patent for the widget. A separate account is established for each asset so that we can isolate and track changes to each separately from other assets. Examples of the most common types of assets include accounts receivable, notes receivable, office supplies, merchandise inventory, buildings, and prepaid rent, among many others. Next are liability accounts. A liability is an obligation to pay for an asset in the future. The primary purpose of a liability is to finance investing activities, such as the purchase of assets, or to finance operating activities. For example, I might buy inventory for resale from a supplier and ask for credit terms of 30 days so I don't have to pay for them right away. But then I'll sell the product in my store for cash today. Just like assets, a separate account is created for each liability. Common examples of liabilities include accounts payable, wages payable, short-term notes payable, long-term notes, unearned revenues. Next are equity accounts, which represent the net assets owned by the owners of a business. In a corporation, the owners are called shareholders. There are only a handful of equity accounts that include share capital, retained earnings, dividends, revenues, and expenses. Share capital represents the investments made by owners into the business, which causes equity to increase. Retained earnings is the cumulative sum of all net income over the life of the corporation to date, less any dividends distributed to shareholders over the same time period. Retained earnings includes revenues, which cause equity to increase, along with expenses and dividends, which cause equity to decrease. Here's a visual representation of equity accounts. The reason why revenues and expenses are considered to be part of retained earnings is because revenues less expenses equals income or earnings and any earnings that are not distributed to the owners are retained in the business. We can create a visual representation of an account using a T or T account, which shows the increases and decreases in an account over time. Regardless of whether an account is an asset, liability, or equity, the left side records debit entries and the right side records credit entries. A T account shows the name of the account at the top and shows the numbers either on the left, debit side, or the right, the credit side. The type of account determines whether an increase or decrease in a particular transaction is represented by a debit or credit. For assets, dividends and expenses, increases are recorded by debits and decreases by credits. For financial transactions that affect liabilities, share capital and revenues, increases are recorded by credits and decreases by debits. Another way to illustrate the debit and credit rules is based on the accounting equation. Remember that dividends, expenses, revenues, and share capital are all equity accounts. Assets are on the left side of the accounting equation and therefore increase with debits and decrease with credits. Liabilities and equity are on the right side of the accounting equation, so they must always increase on the right, or credit side, and decrease on the left, debit side. This summary shows how debits and credits are used to record increases and decreases in various types of accounts. Assets, dividends, and expenses are all increased with debits and decreased with credits. Liabilities, share capital and revenue accounts increase with credits and decrease with debits. The balance of an account is determined by adding and subtracting the increases and decreases in the account. For example, here's a T account for cash showing various debits or increases into the account on the left side and various credits or withdrawals from the account on the right side. The sum of all the debits equals $21,400, and the sum of all the credits equals $17,700.
In this case, the left side is heavier than the right side by $3,700, which is simply the higher number of 21,400 in debits less the lower of 17,700 in credits. We call that $3,700 amount the balance in the cash account at the end of the period, and it's on the left side which represents a debit. The cash account is an asset, so its normal balance will always be a debit. A normal balance is the side on which the increases occur. Now, note, some students ask about debits and credits to their personal bank accounts. If you look at your bank account, you'll see that the bank includes debits and credits to your account, but it's actually the opposite. Credits to your account are increases, and debits are decreases. And the reason for that is because, while your bank account is an asset to you, it's actually a liability to the bank. If you have $3,700 in your bank account at the end of the month, the bank owes it to you, so it's a liability to them. Here's an example of a T account for accounts payable, with a debit of $700 on the left and a credit of $5,000 on the right. The credits exceed the debits by $4,300, therefore the balance at the end is a credit of $4,300. Accounts payable is a liability, and because liabilities increase with credits, the normal balance in accounts payable is a credit. We'll get plenty of opportunity to practice with T-accounts as we progress through the course. The last concept in this learning objective is the chart of accounts. A business will create a list of accounts called a chart of accounts, where each account is assigned both a name and a number. The number is to make allocating or coding transactions easier and allows for accounts to be ordered properly. A common practice is to have the accounts arranged in a manner that's comparable with the order of their use in the financial statements. Assets usually fall into the numbers beginning with a 1, such as 100 to 199 or 1000 to 1999. Liabilities are commonly in the 2 series. Equity accounts like share capital, retained earnings, and dividends are normally in the 3 series. Revenues are commonly 5 series accounts and expenses 6 series, but not always. For my business, for example, I actually use 4 series accounts for revenues and 5 series for expenses. There's no right or wrong way for the company to number their accounts as long as it makes sense and works for them.